What's going on my people? It's your boy Mr. Little back with another video when today I have another special guest coming on and we're gonna see what she thinks. Stay tuned. Tell the fly to an ending with me. Take a ride, come and vibe on the water and see. Yeah. Alright, so like I said guys, I have a special guest today. I'm really looking forward to it. But before we get into it, make sure you are checking out my Instagram, M-R-R-L-I-T-T-L-E. And let me also thank my last special guest, Seattle model Nayani, for coming on. I really appreciate you. And my special guest today is a business owner. She is a sneakerhead, she is a foodie, and just an overall awesome person. So I'm really looking forward to this. And without further ado. Let's bring her on in. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's start with your name. Hi, I'm Abby, aka Abby. Advin Killa. Advin Killa. Advin Killa on Instagram. Like Rashad said over here, I am a sneakerhead, a foodie, and a business owner. And I'm glad to be on here. Where? Now, where were you born and where were you raised? Um, So I was born in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad was in the military. And I lived in Germany for like 16 years of my life. Didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Can you speak um, German? No. I, I lived on base, so it was like kind of like, I know uh, how it is. you know, hit or miss. And like, I took German too, and then I ended up moving. So then I was just like, oh, okay. I'm I got gonna, you. I'm not gonna utilize it, but now I regret it because that would have been pretty dope if I could speak German. So, right, right. Yeah. Making all kind of money. Now, how long have you been in Seattle? Uh, so I've been in Washington for about 10 years now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 10 years. Dope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And one word to describe yourself. One word. Every time I get this question asked, I always have to ask my friends. Right. And every single one of them have said that I'm resilient. Okay. Yeah. Resilient. Mm -hmm. Dope. We're going to jump right into the sneakerhead thing. So Yay. Um, I think that's how I kind of started following you and, and just seeing everything that you do. Um, I really like that you're just into the culture, not even just sneakerhead, but fashion in general. Mm -hmm. um, so for the fellas out there, right, if, if you had an opportunity to curate a man's closet, mm -hmm. right, and you had to give him five pairs of shoes, mm -hmm. right, that you like to see him in, that you think would be good for him to go around in, mm -hmm. um, what five pairs of shoes would you choose? And it doesn't have to be sneakers. It could be boots. It could be shoes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. hmm. So, because I'm a sneakerhead, mm -hmm. I and my godbrother even says this. Mm -hmm. He always tells me, like, girl, if I find out that your man isn't a sneakerhead, we're gonna have problems. And right. I'm like, yeah, you're not wrong. Right. <laughs> so I would definitely say they would have to have a pair of at least Jordan ones, specifically like any of the basic ones, like red ones, royals, or uh, shadows. And then I would definitely want them to have a pair of Air Maxes. Okay. Um, those are super comfy and they go with everything. Mm -hmm. um, which which year? I want to say my favorite ones right now would be any of the Vapor Maxes. I like kind of mm. like a lot of the newer stuff right now. Yeah. Um, just because I feel like. A lot of the older ones, they're cool still, but I mean, the newer ones are just, they're just so comfy. The new technology that they have, it's mm -hmm. just, it's really nice. And then I want to say they have to at least have like one regular nice pair of dress shoes and some dress boots. Cause you know, you can't always be like- Of course, uh, like know. Chelsea boots or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something I got like you. Chelsea boots or something, you know, something like combat, like, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like change the style a little bit. Cause okay. like, I'm not always in sneakers either, Yeah, yeah but yeah, 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 it's yeah. like, just you do, you do like mood. hills, you do yeah, dressy, right? Yeah, right, I got yeah. You. It just depends on my mood, so. And I guess a nice pair of like running shoes, cause I go to the gym a lot. So mm -hmm. if like my partner ends up going to the gym, I would expect them to have like a nice pair of like, you know, decent running shoes. Now it's interesting. Does your partner have to be into fitness? I would like my partner to be into fitness just mm -hmm. because I am. But if they're not, it's not a big deal to me. I, I mean, as long as they're, you know, they're healthy. They're not like mm -hmm. ignoring eating what's... Burger King every day. And... <laughs> I mean, they can as long as they're working off, you know I what I mean? You, I <laughs> as long as they're staying healthy and they're not overindulging on things that they shouldn't be, then they don't have to really be going into the fitness life like I do, so. I got you. Yeah. So you said uh, Air Max, mm -hmm. you said Jordan 1s, mm -hmm. dress shoes, mm -hmm. um, like Oxford, something like that, mm -hmm. Chelsea, well, Chelsea, some type of dress boot, mm -hmm. and a running shoe. Mm -hmm. Something like that they can beat around in, because like I also like to go you know, hiking sometimes dope. or like walking around places as long as they, they don't mind getting beat up, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dope, okay. So, how many pair of shoes do you have, do you know? Because <laughs> I saw you do an IG video one time right, like, showing right, right. all your boxes and I was like, damn. <laughs> um, okay, if I were to take a guess right now, mm -hmm. 
it's maybe like a little over a hundred. Okay. A little over a hundred. Most of them are actually runners and Air Maxes right now. Mm -hmm. I used to be really into Jordan until um, just some of the stuff that they pull out now. I just don't really like like the colors and they're not really my style. I got you. Um, just when I really like the OGs or the retro, yeah. that's what everyone knows them as. Is like. Um, those are usually the colors that I try to go for, mm -hmm. so. Did you get the, I think the Bread 11 just dropped? Was it the Bread So, I was considering it, mm -hmm. but then I thought about it and I said, I already have them. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have a story to the ones that I have, so. Mm -hmm. if you I can tell to... a story if you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, so these were, these Bread 11s came from 2012. Okay. And, um, they were the first pair of sneakers that I actually, like, camped out for. Like, Word. I you remember those days? Like, we didn't yeah, do we, that. I saw, nobody like, does that anymore. Yeah, like rat food and right, like, random right, right. Yeah, online. Because, um, like, everybody now, they're, I mean, people still wait in line, but it's like the raffle is like, it's kind of really competitive now. Like, Absolutely. You know, like, either you do it online now or you, you know, get a phone call and, like, hey, you got it. And then mm -hmm. nobody really waits in line anymore. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, um, these Red 11s, I, I camped out for them. I took two buses with my boyfriend at the time Crazy. Um, to get them. And when we got there, they sold out of my size. So they tried calling other stores and mm -hmm. they found one near where we were staying at. Mm -hmm. And they were like, it's a size four, I think. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, we're, 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 we live right nearby. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if we stop by or not. So when we went over there, it was actually a four and a half, mm -hmm. but I tried it on and I was like, I'm gonna take Look, it. Look, anyway. you know what that I'm means. It, anyway. it could have been a five. You know, yeah, like, I take no, it. <laughs> I was like, I'm just take it anyway. I mean, double socket or whatever. Yeah, you know? I already know. Oh yeah, and I passed on these ones just because I was like, I don't really collect them as much anymore, and mm -hmm. I don't really see a need to have to have two pairs. Yeah. Um, a part of me kind of would have two pairs mm -hmm. just to have four and a half, then just sit, but. And I'm like, I don't really wear my Jordans a lot anymore. If yeah. I wear anything in my closet, the most would be like the ones. I got you. Yeah, the ones would be my only Jordans that I really wear often. Yeah. What are your grails? I don't know why I couldn't take it away. Oh, what are your grails? Oh, <laughs> um, so I have the um, LeBron 9 Big Bangs, the all hey, ones. Yeah, um, when they made yeah, Galaxy yeah. Print really cool compared to now, because yeah. the Galaxy Print stuff isn't really that, that great these days. But mm -hmm. when they were really cool back then, um, so that's one of them. And then I have a pair of OG Air Max 90s in the infrared color that are still made out of leather. Um, You're talking not, about OG. Yeah. <laughs> and then I have, um, damn. Uh, oh, these Coral Rose 6s. So mm -hmm. they were one of the first, like, you know, more feminine color. Mm -hmm. It was pink, kind of looked like the infrared 6s. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have um, some Piston 6s. Those mm -hmm. ones are really old too like um there's like three boxes in my closet that are like from like you can tell that those boxes are from like a long time ago mm -hmm. so um but yeah so those would be my my oldest pairs of shoes right now that are in my closet gotcha yeah. switching over to something else you are you are a shorter woman mm -hmm. right um you are asian correct yes i'm filipino okay yes. gotcha tell the guys out there uh some some taboo things when oh if they're gosh. interested in talking to a shorter woman what would shit how about like three don'ts and three do's okay um i guess for one don't tell me how to like don't tell me that don't. i'm short like i know this i've known this for 26 years of my <laughs> life you don't gotta remind me mm -hmm. <laughs> um if you want my number you can definitely just ask you know like hey can i get your number like yeah. can we talk because i'm the type of person that likes to vibe with people i'm not really like super you know i'm not like me I, mm -hmm. i'm not gonna make the assumption that like oh every guy is like trying to holler right, you know right, what i mean right, right, right. so i guess those are that's my one do and then my mm -hmm. one don't um another don't is uh don't tell me like weird things like oh i just want to put you in my pocket or i want to take you home it, like this makes me feel really uncomfortable that's crazy. <laughs> it makes me feel uncomfortable <laughs> like <laughs> i'm like mm, uh, no no thank you i'm okay <laughs> i guess another do if you want to talk to me or like a shorter girl i think a better way to compliment them is like you are like your style mm -hmm. like i mean because it's not always with everybody but right, 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 you know right. complimenting on like something that i'm wearing versus like obvious the biggest obvious right yeah, like yeah, yeah. you know oh yeah i'm short but i mean you can compliment my shoes you can compliment my outfit my hair mm -hmm. but like it doesn't really have to be the obvious that I am definitely shorter than right. most women. I got you. Um, I guess another don't is, mm, it's kind of hard because like I don't really get too offended by my height. Mm -hmm. You but, you you really embrace it actually. Yeah. Like I, I know a lot of shorter women when they take like certain pictures, mm -hmm. they won't do certain angles and anything. Mm -hmm. You just be like, look, let's just let's just do the right, thing. Right, right, right. Which is dope. I guess another 
one thing I say don't do for shorter women is, um, you know, crack the joke all the time mm -hmm. because like, okay, yes, you met me and then you told me like, oh, you're super short. Mm -hmm. Okay, I already knew that. But if you like keep cracking the joke that they're super short consistently, it's mm -hmm. not really funny anymore after a while, especially if you're trying to like date me or get to know me. Yeah. It's like, again, the obvious, right? right? right. I think one more do. Um, damn, that's kind of hard. Cause it's like, you know, if you're already like really short, you don't really know what else like mm -hmm. a guy could do to like impress you other than that. But, right. um, Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. we can leave it at two. Yeah, I think two for me. I think okay. that's it. I, I'm, I'm not really like you know that kind of person that thinks about more of the do's. I I get more of like the don'ts. Right. So it's like kind of hard to know. So I got you. Yeah. I got you. Oh, you know, actually. There we go. I don't like it when like people touch my head. Like I was thinking you were gonna say that. Like, honestly. You know, like. There are some people that I tolerate only because like I'm, I've known them for years yeah. or I'm just comfortable with them that way. But if you're like a random ass person, you just like touch my head yeah. and I'm just like, it's like, okay. Switching gears again, right? You're a foodie. Mm -hmm. Being a foodie, are you uh, like a food snob when it comes to like first dates or uh, What do you mean out? like by food snob? So um, were you, will, is it a hit against them if they take you to a place that you don't like? No, no. I mean, because for me, if I like, if there, it's a place that I don't like. Mm -hmm. I mean, that doesn't mean that I don't like everything on the menu, though. I got you. Because sometimes I'll be like, oh, maybe the first time I didn't like it, and maybe now I'm open to trying it again, right? Mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of like you know, second chances. Like everybody deserves a second chance, so why can't food? I got everybody you. Deserve a second chance, right? I got you. Honestly, I try to be like one of those people that find hole in the walls. Like mm -hmm. people ask me, yes. like, oh, yes. do you want to go? Like, like, let me take you on a date, and then. And then when I think of dates, I'm like, I hope they're not thinking that I want to go somewhere expensive or bougie or, or I just anything. want good food. Yeah, I just want good food, like authentic good food. Like, yeah. I just never really liked the idea of like in a being in like a fancy sit-in restaurant mm -hmm. and just like, you know, get all dolled up and whatever. Because I'm always like comfortable and very like yeah. sporty street. In a place where you can't even like do the whole Instagram thing. Right, you right. The, yeah, you won't yeah. be in a place like that. Right. And like, I don't know, and I guess like for me too as a foodie, uh, atmosphere really matters a lot to me. There like. You know, I love like when, you know, restaurants playing like really good music and really good food and like the way things are set up, it just matches how the food is supposed to be like mm -hmm. to make you feel right. Um, Cause I like a lot of homey restaurants. Yeah, and, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Very just, you know, just, it's just a good time, mm -hmm. you know? You have like a favorite food um, that you like to eat? Go to. If I'm ever hungry, mm -hmm. my go-to is always chicken. Okay. I'm gonna be straight up honest with you. I love fried chicken. If I'm with my friends and we go out to like eat somewhere and they're like, oh, let's go get chicken. I'm like, okay, bet. Mm -hmm. And I always ask for flats. I okay. never ask for like the drumsticks Drumstick. or the thighs mm -hmm. or anything. I always get, you know, flats, mm -hmm. all flat chicken wings. Or like if they bring them all out, you're like, listen, give me all the flats. Right, yeah, right, okay. yeah. <laughs> One time I went on this, uh, we went out with some friends and because my partner at the time, he loves flats too. Mm -hmm. And so one time I ordered all the flats before he did and he got hella mad because he was like, wow, I was gonna do That's that too. And I was like, sorry, it was yeah. too late. <laughs> <laughs> Best chicken spot uh, for you personally. Does it have to be in Washington? Doesn't have to be. Because I went to Dallas a couple of months ago mm -hmm. And man, Pluckers, it's only in Texas. Okay, Pluckers. And it's like a franchise out there. My cousins introduced me to that place and they mm -hmm. had this bomb ass flavor. Um, Cause I'm more of like a dry rub person. Mm -hmm. um, and they had this spicy ranch and I've never tasted anything like that out here. Mm. Like sp spicy ranch sound kind of basic, but yeah, yeah, for yeah, some yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah. We used to like spicy Chipotle. That's like a- Right, yeah, right. Yeah, and I thing. like, you know, Chipotle dry rub from like, you know, I mean, it's not the best place to go get it from, yeah. but Buffalo Wild Wings. But, I got you. Um, but yeah, no, the spicy ranch was just different. I was just yeah. like, wow. I was like, okay, like I have to come back here for this. They do it right um, out there. Yeah. I was in Dallas, Texas too, and I went to a Texas row house out there. Uh huh. Better than Ruth Chris, like best steak I've ever right, had. Right, right. Like, Texas knows, how, and best barbecue I've ever had was in Texas. Right. Where'd you go when you went? Um. um oh barbecue? man, what was it was called Winners. It was in Dallas. It was in Dallas, Texas. It was um, okay. probably like forty five minutes outside the city. Okay. I'm trying to told you. You need. Oh a, my god. You need to go to Lockhart. Lockhart is pretty good too. Okay. They have really bomb peach cobbler. Probably one of the best I've ever That's had. That's my things. Sweet potato pie and peach cobbler. So good. Give me all the diabetes. So good. Yeah. Well, I had a couple more questions for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. You are a business owner. Mm -hmm. What are some 
things that you had to overcome. Your business is doing is doing pretty well now. Yeah. Um, and you can talk a little bit about it, what you do and what your business is. Right, right. Um, so I'm a creator and a founder and CEO of Celescence. Um, it is my, I guess I want to call it streetwear lifestyle brand. And it's something that just started last year. Came up with it because um, a lot of people have asked me like, Abby, you might as well just start your own like brand or something. Cause you're always into streetwear and sneakers has been your life. Mm -hmm. But makeup's also been my life too. So mm -hmm. it was like kind of hard, like which direction do I want to go to? Mm -hmm. So I decided to like combine a name, which is Celescence, mm -hmm. uh, to kind of fit that, that aspect that I wanted for my brand. So um, basically the soul, because that's where, you know, everything starts, you know, Absolutely. from the bottom of your feet, you use it to walk out through your day, mm -hmm. get you to places. Um, and then obviously sneakers, right? Mm -hmm. And then the essence part, it kind of came from like, fluorescence, mm -hmm. quintessence. So because it's also a lifestyle and streetwear brand, mm -hmm. um, quintessence means it's like a word for like the development of your body, m mind, heart, and soul mm -hmm. all together. And then fluorescence because it's a synonym for glow. So I put the words together and it just made sense. It fit. My brand's supposed to, you know, help support other people that are trying to be creatives mm -hmm. or, you know, entrepreneurs on their own and promote their businesses and mm -hmm. share talents and things that everyone's into. And then they have a community. So, oh. um, but yeah, I got um, a hoodie myself. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I got, the lime I got like green. The, the slime grab. I got like the last one. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I the hardest thing I think is I've been doing a lot of it by myself when it comes to like the promotional aspect mm -hmm. and um, trying to get like designs out there. It's kind of hard though because you get like a mind block sometimes. Yeah. And so that's why I haven't really put out a new design other than the staple that it is right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but recently I've gotten a lot of help from friends. Um. My best friend, she helps do the, you know, the inventory management part of it, making sure that I have all the orders ready and mm -hmm. then like the payments are sent. I have my brother who helps pick up the shipment when it's like ready and everything. Mm -hmm. And then the guy that I talk to now, he's a very, very good um, business guy. He is actually the one that was like, I want to help you get started and put more stuff out because I, I know you only only put out a couple of items like let me help you out and mm -hmm. so he's all the way out in california so gotcha. uh, shout out to nick you know the struggle at the first was like damn i'm really doing this all by myself mm -hmm. like i'm a woman of color you know trying to do these things yeah. trying to make my brand survive because that's the hardest part is Absolutely. having it survive Sticking after a year yeah and you know i almost gave up to be quite honest with you i like literally didn't think that the brand was gonna you know no but i didn't think anybody was gonna get the message behind it you yeah, know yeah, yeah. but then when i started explaining it more posting more and then kind of like embracing the fact that it is a part of who I am and that I should start talking about it more than just like letting it like just pop up on social media. Yeah, yeah. Um, so every time I have a conversation with somebody and they ask what I like to do, I mentioned that I'm a business owner and mm -hmm. then it's like, oh, an open door to have that conversation, right? Absolutely. Um, and then, yeah, I just, I feel like this year has been one of the hardest because it was really all me by myself and I didn't know how much more I could really put time and effort into it mm -hmm. until I met certain people and then the expansion of how everyone found out about it, mm -hmm. which is crazy because like I have people that are from like, not even Washington mm -hmm. that want, you know, hoodies and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that was like the hardest part was trying to keep it alive because, you know, it's kind of hard when you're passionate about something, but then nobody kind of gets no it. No one, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so. I mean, I'll tell you what. I love the message behind it. That's why I copped the hoodie, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And I'm going to cop more stuff too, but just the support too. Like mm -hmm. I see you putting yourself out there time and time again. And um, it's amazing to see that. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to see that. So keep doing your thing. Thanks. Last question I have for you. Okay. Is what is one piece of advice you would give to a guy who's cold approaching any woman? Just on the street, he sees her mm -hmm. and he, he just wants to go up to her and talk to her. What advice would you give him? Just go up to her. Just talk to her. Don't be weird. Let the rest. Let the rest. Yeah, just yeah, let yeah, the yeah. rest happen. Cause it's all about a vibe. Like mm -hmm. I've, me being single, I guess is what I can call it now, mm -hmm. for a really long time. There, there's a there's a vibe. Mm -hmm. Like you'll you'll feel it. You'll know it. You'll see it. It's not something that you'll like. You'll get all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Like if I feel like I don't get a good vibe from you, I'm not gonna talk to you. Mm -hmm. But you'll never know unless you come and talk to me, right? Right. And whether or not it's because you have interest in me because you want to date me or if you want to take me out mm -hmm. or just want to be my friend. It's all about you and your confidence and coming up to me and, you know, wanting to kick it. Because mm -hmm. a lot of the times I do get a lot of guys that just randomly come up to me, whether I'm out like at the mall, the club, randomly at Walmart, mm -hmm. Target. 
Um, and I ain't, that's not a bad place to meet them, though. <laughs> you know, they shopping. Like, you got those from the frozen section? You know what I mean? Just, right, whatever right. whatever like, you got to do. What, what ice cream you got right there? Right. Like, you know. Like, oh, you got to try that mint chocolate chip, girl. Right, that's, right. That's, that's the move. See, like, if a guy came up to me and asked me, like, oh, where'd you got ice cream where'd you get that from i'll i'll talk to them yeah. and then i'll feel the vibe you know like because sometimes even when i go shopping for sneakers like mm -hmm. i'll meet you know guys that are like oh don't do those are some dope ass kicks like where'd you get those i'm mm -hmm. like oh thanks like i got them from uh maybe i'm a stock x or goat or something mm -hmm. at the time because i was like you know i really want these mm -hmm. let me get them and then i tell them the story right and then it leads into like a further conversation like oh how'd you get into sneakers mm -hmm. and then as soon as i have that conversation it's literally like I might come back to the store and just kick it with you. Right, right, right. Even right, if right. it's like not even me because I'm interested in you, mm -hmm. but it's because like I really find your your connection really like mm -hmm. oh valuable. Like you know I valued this conversation right now. Like right now I'm valuing our conversation, yeah, our yeah, friendship. Yeah. You know, right. after we've met, you know, like even that one time. Uh, example, perfect example. <laughs> lemonade. Lemonade. Yeah. Yeah, I met Rashad at Lemonade. At lemonade. And I didn't know who it was at first. Y'all know what Lemonade is. Summertime 2020. You come to Seattle. I think it's Posse who throws it. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Check out Lemonade. You build these dope day parties. Um, pretty much everybody be there. It'd be like Everyone celebrities. Like Tacoma, celebrities. Yeah, Seattle. they pull up and it's a good time. But now you finish your story. Right, yeah. right. Rashad actually saw my god brother because I came a little late mm -hmm. and he was like, You're you're Advin Killa's god brother. And I was like, I was like, how does he know who I am? Right, and right, right. Yeah, Maven mm -hmm. was like, Yeah, some guy named Mr. Little, mm -hmm. but he's not he's not little right, <laughs> I was right, like, right, right, I was right, like right. who is that and mm -hmm. I was like oh my gosh and then I saw you like wow see and yeah. that's what I'm talking about I was like conversation you it's know little things because even if a guy were to see me in public and they were like you're out of and I'm like oh yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, know yeah. who I am like yeah. not like actually know who I am but you you see what kind of stuff I put out there as a Absolutely. content creator and mm -hmm. you know what kind of like communities I'm a part of yeah. you know like one time I went to the club and um there was this person he was like I know you and I'm like you know, he's like, you're Evan and I was like, that's me. What's right, up? Right, you know what right. I mean? If you you have the confidence to reach out to me and talk to me like, and let me know that you love my content, mm -hmm. that's the easy way. Absolutely. That's it. Absolutely. You, know what you, I mean? you 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 got that's six it. you got six seven eight points right there. Yeah. You, know, we, like, you, you only got to get to ten. Yeah. <laughs> if you know who I am, I'm like, all right, cool. We can be friends from here on out. Like, Straight up. Um, I even get girls too. It's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. Like, they're like, hi. I know you, right. but I was so scared to say hi to you, but I'm going to say hi now. I was like, like what's up? Hey, hey, you know what I mean? what's good? It's just a conversation. Yeah. Nothing hurts. If somebody says no, somebody says no. If somebody mm -hmm. says, hey, what's up? Yeah. What's, what's the hurt in that? You know? Don't be left wondering what if. Just go up to her. Right, you know, say, right. Uh, I like that little burgundy streak you got in your hair. I like right, that. You know, just right. see where it see where it goes from there. Exactly. See where it goes. Yeah. So just don't be scared. There you go. And don't be awkward, because that's what makes it even worse. It's mm -hmm. like if you come up to me and you're awkward and don't have the confidence in what you're about to say to me, mm -hmm. it's just gonna make me feel like, oh, I don't know what to tell you. Like, right. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? But yeah, I think that's my piece of advice: is like, just don't be scared. Be confident. Dope. You know, don't think about the what ifs. If she like, oh, she thinks I'm fucking weird. Oh, mm -hmm. well, no. You don't know until you try it, right? Yeah. It's like in everything you do in life. You never know until you try it. Got so. you. All right. Well, there you go. All right, y'all. Well, I want to thank y'all for tuning in. I want to thank my special guest, Avin Kilda, <laughs> <laughs> for coming on today. Um, again, uh, say your IG one more time. It's underscore Advin Kilda on Instagram and Twitter. Don't. Don't. Well, if you did enjoy the video, drop a like down below. And uh, if you're not subscribed to your boy, go ahead and subscribe to your boy. And to all my new subscribers, Samurai Bow. I appreciate y'all. And uh, until next time. Bye, Peace. guys. Cool. Sweet. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs>